He was getting old and paunchy, and his hair was falling fast. And he sat around the Legion telling stories of the past, of a war that he had fought in, and the deeds that he had done, in his exploits with his buddies. They were heroes, every one. And though sometimes to his neighbors his tales became a joke, all his legion buddies listened, for they knew whereof he spoke. But we'll hear his tales no longer, for old Bill has passed away. The world's a little poor, for a soldier died today. He will not be mourned by many, just his children and his wife, for he lived an ordinary and quite uneventful life. He held a job and raised a family, quietly going his own way, and the world won't note his passing. Though a soldier died today. When politicians leave this earth, their bodies lie in state, while thousands note their passing and proclaim that they were great. Papers tell their whole life stories from the time that they were young, but the passing of a soldier goes unnoticed and unsung. Is the greatest contribution to the welfare of our land a guy who breaks his promise and cons his fellow man? Or the ordinary fellow who in times of war and strife goes off to serve his country and offers up his life? A politician's stipend and the style in which he lives are sometimes disproportionate to the service that he gives. While the ordinary soldier who has offered up his all, is paid off with a medal and perhaps a pension, small. It's so easy to forget them, for it was so long ago that the old bills of our country went to battle. But we know it was not the politicians with their compromises and ploys who won for us the freedom that our country now enjoys. Should you find yourself in danger with your enemies at hand, would you want a politician with his ever-shifting stand? Or would you prefer a soldier who has sworn to defend his home, his kin and country, and would fight until the end? He was just a common soldier and his ranks are growing thin. But his presence should remind us we may need his like again. For when countries are in conflict, then we find the soldier's part is to clean up all the troubles that the politicians start. If we cannot do him honor while he's here to hear the prayer, then at least let's give him homage at the ending of his days. Perhaps just a simple headline in a paper that would say, Our country is in mourning for a soldier died. Sometime back, I received, in the name of our country, the bodies of four Marines who had died while on active duty. I said then that there is a special sadness that accompanies the death of a serviceman, for we're never quite good enough to them. Not really, we can't be. 
because what they gave us is beyond our powers to repay. And so when a serviceman dies, it's a tear in the fabric, a break in the hole, and all we can do is remember. It is, in a way, an odd thing to honor those who died in defense of our country, in defense of us, in wars far away. The imagination plays a trick. We see these soldiers in our mind as old and wise. We see them as something like the founding fathers, grave and gray-haired. But most of them were boys when they died, and they gave up two lives, the one they were living and the one they would have lived. When they died, they gave up their chance to be husbands and fathers and grandfathers. They gave up their chance to be revered old men. They gave up everything for our country, for us. We owe them a debt we can never repay. All we can do is remember them and what they did and why they had to be brave for us.